Welcome to the four-wheel drive buggy Insanity Off-Road Championship Series Finale. I'm Cam Cullen, joined by the great Ty Tessman as we check out the race format. Ty, you're from Alberta, Canada. I imagine you've had your fair share of chilly conditions, right? Yeah, I've got some cold weather racing experience. The cars are definitely more brittle when that happens. I've actually broke a couple parts, but you got to choose softer tires, obviously, sometimes even softer plastics for the cars to make it through the races. So I've actually raced on a track in Calgary where there was ice on the track. I'm not doing as well as I thought I would do, but that's more because I wasn't prepared. Honestly, I've been here in the past where it was loose dirt. Did not expect it to be as compacted as it was. Also, with this series, since we have no drops, you really couldn't afford to have any mistakes. So that first round really cost me in points. First two rounds, I was getting taken out in the first lap. That was always costing me. And level of competition we have, just can't afford those kind of mistakes. It's hard to come back. The tire game has been the biggest thing, probably. It was warmer when the season started in this championship. Now now it's obviously the track's a lot more hard, a lot more cold pack. So tire selection's been a big learning curve. It's been a lot of fun. I haven't been too consistent. That's what I need to dial in. I actually have some more worn out tires that seem to be working pretty good because it's almost like you want slick if there's no debris on the track. I'm saucing them and making sure the tires are hot using the tire warmers and everything else. Making sure the tires are super hot before I get on track. That along with the plastic even because you don't want to break. I'll give it up to you guys, RLRC. Girlfriend for filming. Yeah, all my subscribers on my YouTube. Thank you guys. You guys make it happen. This RRLRC presentation is brought to you in part by A-Main Hobbies, your RC off-road headquarters, free shipping on eligible orders, and by Naughty Boy RC. Keep it naughty. Click the links in the description to shop. There's no ice on this track, but it will still be a fight for traction on this cold clay. The story of this series is young Garrett Crescitelli and his Techno EB410.2. In a field of nearly 20 racers, Crescitelli's been top qualifier in all four rounds, and he'll look to put an exclamation mark on the series now. Ooh, but a rough start for Crescitelli. He rolled it around turn one, Benam to first. As these cars get sorted out, we're joined now by Ty Tespin, the 2014 IFMAR 1-8th world champion in Italy. You have your favorite 1-8th race, but how about your favorite four-wheel drive buggy belt? Any of the Reedy races, one of the last ones that they ever did, I won the four-wheel drive portion of it. I believe it's the first year I switched to X-Ray. I won the four-wheel drive half. That was probably the best time I had in four-wheel drive. To be honest, the eight-scale Nitro is probably my favorite class, and obviously winning the Worlds was one of the peak moments in that. Definitely four-wheel drive. A separate discipline, especially when the tra when the grip is high. It's probably the hardest car to drive that I've ever driven on like a glued surface because everything is so fast and so direct that in the right conditions, I would say four-wheel drive buggy is one of the hardest cars to drive. I agree with you there as we watch Panam and Crescitelli. These guys are chasing like they're on the last lap. As we're only one minute down, the top two really starting to separate amongst themselves. Post now to third. I had a hard spill, fell all the way back down to seventh place. As we get a glimpse of Manila lap traffic, that will throw off the race line of Crescitelli. He got it wrong over the double, but he'll make up that time in no time. Already right back on the back bumper of Banam. You heard Banam at the top of the show citing his disappointment with this four-wheel drive buggy class, but he's looking to shake off the inconsistency now, but that won't help. Crescent's Heli tied up Banam down the back stretch. No harm, no foul, though. They race on. That's a tough racing incident there. That's kind of a drag race and tried to turn back in, but they ain't got the worst of it. Crescitelli will go back to the drawing board in second. His crew chief, his dad, Bob, has to be really proud of the sportsmanship there. The dads are huge. My dad was a huge part of my career. He's always there to help me gain speed, motivate me. He's obviously a big guy. He does an awesome job with that. And yeah, having a good dad behind you is for sure a huge benefit and an advantage over other people, for sure. Ooh, there's a big bobble from Crescitelli, but a generous marshal from Trek owner Brian Lee. That actually happens a lot, a lot more than you think, especially at the high level even. The marshals want to do a good job and they end up can ruin races if they advance them too far. No doubt. Oh, a tough break for Manila over that back jump. Ty, you've had a lot of success in your 20 plus year career. What kind of advice can you give to the young guns like Crescitelli? Yeah, for sure. There's a big advantage to being young and not having a lot of expectations. You can actually drive a lot harder and you don't feel like there's anything to lose. You have that bit of freedom. The hard part is when they're expected to win and that'll come soon if he keeps winning. So that's going to show, I think, how strong he is. But I wish him the best, obviously. As soon as he starts being expected to win, that's when it gets harder and it's never going to get easier. That's my word of advice is it's never going to get easier if you want to make it a profession. It's always going to be harder. It's going to be more work. But 
but it's also a great job to have and it's pretty awesome to be able to travel around and race at all these different tracks and get to experience all that stuff. Coming up on two minutes to go and Crescitelli is not giving Benam any room. Two different motors here. Crescitelli rocking the Tekken 5.5 Gen 3, Benam on the 13.5 turn Phantom Helix. Oh, and Crescitelli found something on the bottom. He'll get by Banam for first. It's his first lead of the race. Kirk smacks the side of the old barn. He went for a ride. Crescitelli and Banam unfazed. Let's go back to the overtake, courtesy of lap traffic. I mean, it's a lucky break, and that sometimes happens. The guy that's in the front doesn't always have the best chance of getting through in when you're going through traffic. It's happened quite a bit, actually. Here comes Crescitelli trying to hold on to that one spot with about 120 left to go in this race. Wear and tear starting to set in. How did you stay sharp during your long race days, Ty? Definitely not easy. Eating properly is a big thing. I'll have a banana or something before the main to try and keep from cramping up. The long days are just tough. I'm trying to get used to it a little bit, but it's tough on everybody, and I think you can see that in the later race is there seems to be more chaos because I think people's awareness goes down. Their judgment is a little bit hindered by the, the late nights and lack of energy, so you can kind of see it happening. But I think the people who prepare the best and eat the best through the day have the best success, especially in the late races of the day. Oh, and maybe some brain fade for Crescitelli there. Just as you thought he was going to pull away running the fastest lap, he makes a small mistake and another. Oh, man, but now I've had a chance to get right back by Crescitelli, and he made a mistake too. Crescitelli remains in control. Ty, we're coming up on 30 seconds to go. What's your mentality if you're racing up front? I try to tell myself to not make any mistakes because I'm not going to be able to pull away unless I'm way faster, which it doesn't seem to happen very often anymore. Try not to get flustered by dumb stuff happening. If you make a mistake or black traffic crashes in front of you, just stuff that's out of your control. Try not to get flustered with it. Keep plugging away, basically, is how you, you got to think about it because there's not a lot of room for improvement on lap times when you're at the high level or the track it may be super demanding. You can't really go much faster in a lot of sections. Wise words. Crescitelli kept plugging away this afternoon, and that gets him the race win. This victory makes him our four-wheel and two-wheel drive buggy insanity off-road champion. Pretty cool. That's impressive. We didn't have a chance to really speak about the rest of the racers, but it was a tight, action-packed event. Crescitelli, though, had a heck of a run. There was a lot of mayhem on the track, that's for sure, and he did good getting around it all. I would say it was a bit of a struggle. Qualifier 2, my diff blew out and I had to put in my spare diff which had a different diff fluid. My car would just pull a lot in the corners. I think I've got that figured out for next time but it was a bit of a struggle at the point. Me and Jack had amazing battle. That was the fastest I've seen Jack drive and I was really pushing myself also. Yeah to my parents, to Scott again for the buggy and a lot of other people too. There's a lot of people who helped me. Ty, what are your closing thoughts? I think it's awesome. It's a great idea to have this kind of thing. It gives people more exciting races. It's different because it's not just yeah, each week it's separate like you kind of work towards a goal a commentary like this is pretty awesome like what you do put it together and how awesome it looks i think it really gets people more interested than just watching a regular rc race that'll do it from Booton, new jersey for ty tesman i'm cam cohen saying thanks for watching